Now, does anyone remember from last week why I still use notes, although many ministers do not? Wow. Because we might want to leave before 1230. Because I know myself well enough to know that if I go off this script very far, I'll still be trying to wander my way back. This is Independence Day weekend, isn't it? We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. That they are, we are endowed by our Creator with certain unalienable rights, and among them are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Thank you. A powerful mission statement, isn't it? Here's another powerful one. Space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise. Her five-year mission to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life and new civilization, and to boldly go where no man has gone before. It changed a little bit, a little later. Space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise, her continuing mission to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life and new civilization, to boldly go where no one has gone before. Anyone notice the differences? There's a story in a history book, not the one that I studied in, in elementary school last century, maybe the one before that. There's a story that Jane Addams tried very hard to get her husband to edit the beginning of the Declaration of Independence to say all men and women are created equal, or at least all people are created equal. And John's response was, dear, I'm having a hard enough time getting this committee to agree on this language without throwing another variable in there. That's a paraphrase even though it, you may think so, I was not actually there. So these are mission statements, specific, intense, focused, and bold. Why do we have a mission statement? Think for a moment, if we were tempted to uh, say, open up a side business, ferrying passengers from Federation headquarters to the planet Romulus. Bump that up against the mission statement, Mm, no, not consistent. Temptations say to set myself up as the empress of a primitive civilization where they know how fabulous I am. <laughs> Bump that up against the mission statement and the prime directive. No, a mission statement. There's a time chronicled in scripture in Jesus' life, right after his baptism. Baptism was when he accepted his mission. And then there's a time where he went off into the desert and fasted. How long was it for? Yeah. Which in Middle Eastern literature means as long as it takes. 40 days and 40 nights. Based on Matthew 4, Jesus was tempted. And Jesus decided that instead of using his power for personal gain, this is what he would use it for. Live not by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Worship the Lord. There are many different ways to interpret this, but here's my way at least for today. Live not by bread alone refers directly to his words in the Sermon of the Mount when he says, seek first the kingdom. What does that mean? It means pray, meditate, get still, learn who you are and why you are here to express. 
Number two, do not put the Lord your God to the test. For me, that means, also from the Sermon on the Mount, ask, seek, knock. Don't wait for that great customer service department in the sky to decide when I can have what I want when I want it. Ask, seek, knock. And the third one, worship the Lord, relates directly to what we call the law of mind action. Metaphysically, at any point in the scripture where we see the word Lord, it means what? Law. And law means the law of mind action. And that relates directly to the scripture. Judge and you'll be judged. For by the same measure you give, so will you receive. So the rest of Jesus' ministry, the rest of his mission was in what he told us we are here to do. You are the light of the world. Let your light shine. So that's Jesus' ministry. So what is my light? Now, light may be light, but my light in this context is probably a little different from yours. Otherwise, we'd all be bumping into each other up here trying to grab the microphone, right? One of the things that I believe is the purpose of this human life is to demonstrate for me why I am here to give me the opportunity to learn that, to give me the opportunity to share, to experience, and to make mistakes. Following other human-centered and spiritually-centered paths helped me discover this path. This path doesn't always stay inside the lines. For me, sometimes it goes outside the lines. And that's okay, because one of the things about unity is we have core beliefs. This is what we all believe, and we welcome you to explore and create your own spirituality within this framework or outside of this framework. Because many of us are learning, as we judge, so are we judged. So, remember last week we talked about Mistakes being messages. You know, we make a mistake. We do something that doesn't exactly give us the results that we were looking for, and <clears throat> we make a little adjustment over here, and we make a little, a, 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 little, a little movement over here, like, okay, anybody have backup cameras in their cars? I, I got covetousness going on, because backing up is not my best thing. Um, I, uh, I practice sometimes here in the parking lot. You'll be glad to know that most of your cars aren't here when I do that. Because I, uh, somehow or other, I just cannot get my car lined up with that line. Now, I can parallel park every day. But backing into a parking space, still an issue for me. Do you think maybe Sulu, Chekhov, and Wesley Crusher interesting name, Crusher, do you think that they were first able to dock the spaceship the very first time they tried? Well, they probably had one of those cameras, you know, or something, because this is supposed to be an advanced civilization, but I have a feeling that it was more like Galaxy Quest. Anyone with me there? Where these folks are pretending that they know how to fly spaceships, and they're trying to figure out how to do it, and they ran into things a lot. Now, I'm aware that this is fiction, and not everyone in this room is a Star Trek geek, but I am making a point, and if you're not getting that point, just talk with me later, and we'll talk about it more. The idea is we just keep moving and learning who we are. As I continue to learn and grow and to discover who I am, One of the things I look at is the issue of meshing my work with my life. That way lies madness and also burnout. Having a balanced life supports my mental, emotional, and physical and spiritual life. Having an opportunity to do work that is satisfying and where I believe I may be making a difference somewhere. 
but also having interests and hobbies that are outside of that, where I use skills that are not the same skills, <clears throat> excuse me, that I use at work, helps me stay balanced. And also having a community, a community within which I know I am loved and supported and where I can share and I can make mistakes and you'll still love me, you'll still accept me. So within the criteria of this work, interests, and community, <clears throat> this week I've been exploring all that for myself, and here's what I've learned to accept about myself this week. I am, this is who I am, I am a competent, creative, generous, often self-absorbed, controlling, and insecure, bundle of canine loving peace, love, and joy. That's who I am, and as Charles Fillmore and others have said, I reserve the right to change my mind. So within this criteria, that's who I am. And the next philosophical question after who am I is, why am I here? Why am I here? Now, for many decades, many decades, I believed that the reason I was here was to meet the constantly shifting and mostly unexpressed expectations and opinions of other people. I'm going to repeat that in a few minutes. Just live with it for a minute. Expectations. Perhaps the metaphorical and allegorical St. Peter at the gates of heaven, again, metaphorical and allegorical, has expectations for those people who may want to enter in. Anybody remember <clears throat> Forrest Gump? Forrest Gump, <clears throat> excuse me, shows up at those gates to St. Peter, and St. Peter says, um, We've been looking forward to seeing you because we've heard a lot about you. And Forrest says, yes, I've heard a lot about you too. And, and I was not really looking forward to coming now, but this is probably the best alternative for me. So, hey, I'm glad to see you. And St. Peter says, not so fast. It's getting kind of crowded up here. So we've decided we're going to have a little test before, a little entrance test. It's not hard. It's not hard. We're going to give you a calculator so you can figure things out. So there are three questions. You, you'll have some time to work on this. The first question is, what days of the week start with the letter T? Dan, you want to finish it for me? You can come on up. <laughs> uh, the uh, second question is, how many seconds are there in a year? Here's your calculator. Boris looks at the calculator, looks at St. Peter, looks at the calculator. And the third question is, what is God's first name? So you've got some time to think about this. Forrest goes away. A little while later, he comes back. He says, I got the answers now. Already? Really? Oh, okay. So first question, what days of the week start with the letter T? Well, that's easy. Today and tomorrow. <laughs> St. Peter says, hmm, that's not exactly what I was expecting, but I did not make my criteria clear, so... I'll have to accept that. So the next question was, and I gave you a calculator for this. Horace looks at the calculator, looks at St. Peter. How many seconds are there in a year? Well, that's easy, it's 12. 12, really, 12, how'd you get 12? Well, January 2nd, February 2nd, <laughs> March. I see where you're going with this. Yeah, okay, well, I wasn't clear in my expectations, so I have to take that. So. The third question was, what is God's first name? Boris says, well, I didn't have to think very hard about that because that's easy. God's first name is Howard. Howard. Howard, how did you get Howard? And Saint, and Boris says, well, that's easy. It's in the prayer. All together now, our Father, who is art in heaven, Howard be thy name. Right, okay, so you've heard this one. All right, but it still makes a point, doesn't it, about expectations when they're not uh, clear, when they're not clear, and how can we meet the expectations of other people? So for decades, I thought 
that my purpose in being here was to meet the constantly shifting and mostly unexpressed expectations of other people. And one of the first books I read on this path was by Terry Cole Whitaker. What you think of me is none of my business. And that nudged me right into a brand new paradigm, a whole new frame of reference. What? That's even possible? That what you think of me is none of my business? How will I know who I am if I don't ask you first? And so I had to, to live with that, who I am and why I'm here. And why I'm here continues to change. And what I do, I invite you to, if you, here's another mission for you. Should you choose to accept it? Remember that mission, Mission Impossible, right? Okay, so should you choose to accept it, I invite you to go to the website, MSB, right? Yes. Mission Statement Builder, msb.franklincovey.com. Remember Stephen Covey, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People? They have a beautifully set up tool for creating your personal mission statement. Here's another idea. Write your own obituary. Just in case who you are right now, who I am right now, it's not exactly who I choose to be. Another tool. On that website, the, the Franklin Covey website, there are some beautiful mission statements. There's the mission statement for Martin Luther King. There's the mission statement for Benjamin Franklin, for Irma Bombeck. They're beautiful, they're elegant, and so inspiring. So I invite you, and as I continue to refine my understanding of who I am and why I'm here, I invite you to join me in that. Remember what Reverend Christine said the last time she was here? She'll be here again next week. You be you. I'll be me. Everyone else is taken. Let's pray. Precious Spirit, we're so grateful for the opportunity to share together, the opportunity to remember together that there are no mistakes, that we have every opportunity in our lives to continue to refine who we believe ourselves to be and why we are here as we continue to bless ourselves, each other, and our world. In the name and through the power of the living Christ, which dwells in each of us, amen.